we're all about. Hello guys, this is The Gaming Revolution here and welcome back to an all new Call of Duty 2021 video. So today we have received some brand new information from Eurogamer clarifying a prior leak from Modern Warzone in which he claims that this year's Call of Duty would be developed by Sledgehammer Games and that it would be called Call of Duty World War II Vanguard. At the time he thought that it was just a code name, but according to Eurogamer, their sources have confirmed that that is actually going to be the proper title for the game unless it changes. A lot of people were talking about how they don't think this is going to be the official name because there's other games out there that use the Vanguard title, but it does seem like this is going to be this year's Call of Duty's name, which is a bit of a mouthful, but so is Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. So I guess they're doing a similar format here with Call of Duty 2021. But the big piece of information is that Modern Wars Zone said that according to his sources, part of the game would be set in the 1950s and that it would be some sort of alternative take on World War II in which the war was for some weird reason extended into the 1950s, whether that was the Nazis somehow won the war or certain events happened differently or maybe the war started slightly later, no one really knows, but according to Eurogamer, this part of the leak is incorrect and it will be quote unquote a traditional war. World War II game, but some of the game will be set in the 1950s, so maybe they could explore the Korean War, which took place from the 25th of June 1950 to the 27th of July 1953, between North Korea and South Korea. It seems like any time there is a leak in the community, a big portion of it ends up being correct, but at the same time, a big portion of it ends up being incorrect, and being heavily involved in the leak scene in the past, I know from first-hand experience how leaks can become a little bit messy. It does seem though, every time there is a big leak, there is always at least something that is wrong with it. And I really do wonder why that is. Maybe Activision send out false information on purpose to just get discussion going? I have no idea. But the thing is, technically speaking, this World War II game could still be historically inaccurate and maybe somewhat make-believe. The reason as to why I say this is because I feel like this game is probably going to be set in the Modern Warfare and Black Ops universe. Obviously, those two universes have now collided with the Modern Warfare reboot, such as us seeing Imran Zakiev in Black Ops Cold War's campaign. And the reason why they are now connecting all of the Call of Duties together in one big timeline is because of Warzone. Warzone has been described as the connective tissue connecting all of the Call of Duty games together, and that is where the storyline is intertwining. So I would assume that this World War II game is probably going to be set in that same universe as well, simply because of Warzone. And if that is going to be the case, we could see many familiar characters from the Black Ops or Modern Warfare franchise. For example, we could see Viktor Reznov, and there could be some crossover to World at War's campaign. Also, Sergeant Frank Wood served in the United States Marine Corps, during which he had much combat experience fighting in the Korean Korean War, and this gained him a reputation that led the CIA to recruit him for their Special Activities Division. So maybe if part of this game is going to be in the 1950s, maybe we could see Sergeant Frank Woods in the Korean War. Also, Alex Mason in the early 1950s served as an infantryman and a later Force Recon Marine in South Korea. So once again, we could potentially see Mason in this game, and this is why I do like the idea of connecting the universes together, because we can see returning characters in games that are completely unrelated. Maybe we'll just see them as cameos though and not the main characters, like we saw Imran Zakiev in Black Ops Cold War only momentarily. I do also wonder as to whether this game is going to be connected to Call of Duty World War 2 or if this is going to be a completely separate game from Sledgehammer Games past Call of Duty. But like I said, this game could still technically be somewhat historically inaccurate if it is going to be set in the Modern Warfare and Black 
Black Ops universe, because canonically, in this universe, if you've been watching my prior videos, from the intel in Cold War Zombies, we know that during World War II, Nazis were sent into the Dark Aether, to return at a later date in the 1980s, specifically 1984. And it seems like we will be unleashing these lost Nazi zombies from the Dark Aether in the next Zombies map, which is going to be set in Berlin. We even have a teaser image where we see Berlin completely destroyed and on fire, and it seems to be set at night time, and there's Nazi zombies roaming around the map. So I'm wondering if this World War II Vanguard game is going to be set in the same universe. Technically speaking, it could still be an alternative take on World War II in comparison to the real world. We know that the Nazis never actually lost the war as he said, but they were secretly sent into the Dark Aether to return years later. So this seems far-fetched, but what if this game could explore what the Nazis were up to during World War II and the 50s to prepare for their return? Although I'm not exactly sure if Activision and the developers would want to tie zombies directly into the campaign, that does seem a little far-fetched to me, and it seems a bit outlandish, so maybe the war still technically ended in 1945, but unbeknownst to the world, the Nazis were actually secretly plotting a return. They didn't actually lose the war, they just went into hiding to return later, and maybe that is what this game could explore. And I guess it would be based off of the conspiracy theories that the Nazis are still alive, and maybe even Hitler was sent into the Dark Aether, although I highly doubt they're going to show Hitler in any capacity in their games. He's referenced as the Fuhrer in Cold War Zombies Intel, but they tend to stray away from his name directly and having him as a main figurehead. But yeah, if the Nazis knew that they were going to be victorious as they planned to return at a later date, then it wouldn't make any sense for Hitler to kill himself. So even though the world might have thought that the war ended in 1945, technically speaking the war never actually ended if the Nazis were just secretly plotting behind the scenes. Because time works differently in the Dark Aether, which would give the Nazis a lot more time to work with. They might have only been in the Dark Aether for 30 to 40 years, however to them it might have been hundreds if not thousands of years, which would have given them so much time to prepare, and they also would have mutated obviously into Nazi zombies and other monstrosities. And this is how I think that this game could be an alternative reality game, and at the same time a traditional World War II game, if it is related related to this zombie stuff. And they just say that yes, the war ended in 1945, but did you guys know, the Nazis didn't actually accept defeat, they just went into the Dark Aether. I think that would be an interesting storyline to explore. As to how they would fit it into a campaign, I don't really know though. It would have to be secret missions, so only selective people in certain countries' governments would know what the Nazis were up to and the majority of the world wouldn't know, and they could be going on secret operations to try and stop them. There is also a note on Golova, that is actually a reference to World War II zombies. I think this is a reused asset though. I don't really know how Call of Duty World War II is going to tie in with this overarching Call of Duty universe because it doesn't make any sense. Obviously all of the stuff to do with the zombies is not happening in the Dark Aether story. So I think this is just a reused asset and it's a mistake. Maybe it could be teasing Call of Duty 2021 and the return to World War II, but I don't think so, but you can share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. So right now this game is getting a lot of help. Basically, people are annoyed at seeing yet another World War II title, because when Sledgehammer Games released their last title, it released in a really poor state. As you guys know, the headquarters was completely broken on launch, people couldn't even get into the game, and they had to update the headquarters so that only you would be in the headquarters when it was supposed to be this social experience. And there were times where they had to just completely remove the headquarters from the game, because people literally couldn't play the game during the first month of launch. There was loads of issues with it. I think World War II had the poorest Call of Duty launch ever. It sold really, really well when it first released, but then the hype declined so fast and it just fell off a cliff. Also, they had all of the weird regiment stuff. A lot of people didn't like that. Then Glenn Schofield and Michael Condry left the studio, after which there was a massive overhaul to the game, in which they did manage to fix the multiplayer, and a lot of people really like World War II's multiplayer if you played it after 
the overhaul, but the big issue is that the majority of people stopped playing the game after its first month, because it was just really boring upon release and had a bunch of issues. And no one even gave the game a chance by the time that the overhaul came. I am confident that Sledgehammer Games can create a good product here, because they proved it with that overhaul, and Sledgehammer Games have been hiring hundreds of new employees. They even opened up a brand new studio in Australia, and we know that they are working on multiple different Call of Duty projects, so they are not just working on World War II Vanguard, there's other stuff that they're working on, and they're helping out with other Call of Duties as well. So I don't think we can really judge Sledgehammer Games on their past game, just because of the fact that they proved with the overhaul that they are competent. And the studio is basically a new studio at this point, there are some of the old leads, but most of the employees ended up leaving, so it's basically a brand new studio, and I'm sure that this game will also be supported by, you know, Ravensoft, Treyarch, Infinity Ward, because it seems like every single Call of Duty that releases now has multiple different developers working and helping with it. That seems to be what's going on for every single Call of Duty, and I don't think it's going to be any different for this game, especially because it's been made in about two years. I am really bummed, though, because there's been this rumour about this alternative reality World War II game, and I was really excited about it because it sounded similar to Wolfenstein. For example, they could explore an alternative reality where the Nazis won the war, and there would be a revolution to reclaim the world, and they could also explore a lot of weird Nazi experiments, such as the Wonder Waffer and Die Glock programs that they obviously explored in World at War Zombies, but they could re-delve into if they were to explore an alternative reality World War II game. So I am bummed out that this game isn't going to be an alternative reality game. However, as he said, maybe they're going to tie it into all of this stuff to do with the Nazis being sent into the Dark Aether, but that still doesn't sound as exciting. I was honestly really looking forward to this game, and now that I've found out that it is a traditional World War II game, I'm not as excited. Don't get me wrong, I'm not bummed out or anything like that. I think that we need to wait for the reveal and see what the gameplay is actually like, because I don't think that time errors actually make that big of a difference. At the end of the day, if the gameplay is good, it doesn't matter when it is set. I am really worried about the marketing for this game, though, because it's already receiving a ton of hate, and the game has not even been officially announced yet. So I do wonder how successful it is going to be. It does seem like Sledgehammer games always get the wrong end of the stick. They had the first advanced movements game, and then they went back to World War II, but the game launched with a bunch of issues. And now they're basically doing a second attempt at a World War II game, and hopefully this one is a lot better. Honestly, though, the Call of Duty community flip-flops so, so much. People were complaining for years that Call of Duty is the same thing every single year. So what did Call of Duty do? They went to the future with advanced movement. Then everyone complains that advanced movement is just too much, so they went back to boots on the ground with Call of Duty World War II. And everyone was so hyped for that game. Fast forward a handful of years, and we are now seeing yet another World War II game, and everyone is mad about it. So yeah, I understand that there is a lot of negative connotation because the last World War II game had a poor launch. But like I said, they ended up fixing the game. It's just that by that time, most of the community had left. I do also want to say that despite there being a lot of hate online for this game, we have to understand that the Call of Duty community that we see online is a bubble. The majority of the audience doesn't actually hop on social media to talk about the game, they just play it, they don't interact with anyone online, they have no idea what other people's opinions are, so for all we know, this game could be very well liked. But I've seen a lot of big streamers and stuff like that hating on this game too, and that is why I am a bit worried because it's not like it's just a small bubble, it's a big bubble, and even even though yes, there's a load of people that don't hop on social media and aren't influenced by content creators and what other people are saying, there is still a big portion of the community that is going to be influenced by what people are saying. The Call of Duty community is renowned for jumping to conclusions, and this is just yet another case of that. I do think that we should pause, not freak out, and just wait to see what on earth this game even is, because none of this is even official just yet. And also, I do want to say, it is a bit strange that Sledgehammer Games would make two World War II games back to back. It is really odd and I'm wondering if they decided to do another World War II game because they felt like the last game could have been a lot better, especially because just before New Year's they tweeted out power off, power on. Let's try this again, happy new year. And I'm guessing let's try this again was hinting that they would be trying another World War II game again. There's not really a need for them to do another World War II game to be honest, unless they're going to try and do it a lot better this time. I do hope that the campaign does explore some
some stuff that we haven't seen from Call of Duty games before because there's just so much stuff that happened during World War II that is just not really talked about. You could sit online researching stuff forever and you'd still never get to the bottom of it. The point that I'm trying to get across is that Call of Duty is Call of Duty. There's always going to be the things that we hate like skill-based matchmaking. Regardless of the time setting, Call of Duty is Call of Duty. No matter what time setting they go in, it's always going to have the same flaws and how good the game is will just be affected by the gameplay style. It won't at all be affected by the time setting. The time setting, yes, allows for them to get creative depending on which time zone they are in, but if they are creative, they're not limited by time setting. They can still be creative in any time setting they can go in. It just depends on how creative the developers are. Black Ops Cold War, although it's set in the Cold War, it isn't really limited by the time setting. I hope that the reveal is good. I'm assuming that the game is going to be revealed via Warzone again. And like I was saying earlier, I think that this game might be tying in with the stuff going on with the Nazis being sent into the Dark Ether. And further evidence of that is that obviously in Warzone, the zombies arrived at Verdansk on the Vodianoi ship, which is a Soviet ship, but for some weird reason, the zombies are Nazi zombies, which doesn't make any sense. And this leads me to believe that maybe zombies is going to be the key for this game. And that might be where this rumor sparked about this game being an alternative reality World War II game. Maybe technically speaking, the war is still going to end in 1945, but like I said, they could explore what the Nazis were up to during the war and during the 1950s to prepare for their return at a later date. Maybe there were secret Nazi missions and operations, and that is what this game could be based around. Other people think that it could explore the Pacific side of the war, but again, we do not know whether this game is going to be tied into World at War, or whether it's going to be tied into Call of Duty World War 2, or maybe even both, which doesn't make any sense. The fact that they're connecting all of the Call of Duties together now is starting to make things really confusing. And would Activision want zombies to be that thing that connects everything together? I don't know, but it does seem like that is the case considering they are adding zombies into Warzone, which means that zombies is clearly very successful right now and is a huge pull factor. But I don't know if they would ever want to have zombies be a main part of the campaign as opposed to it just being a little Easter egg like we saw in Black Ops Cold War's campaign and previous campaigns. And since we're on the topic of a Warzone, apparently, according to Eurogamer and Modern Warzone, there won't be a new map for Warzone to do with World War II Vanguard, but the weapons and operators will still be integrated with it. I don't know if this is true, though. This is just a rumor, so take it with a grain of salt. That does seem likely, though, because it is rumored that when the new Euro Mountains map comes after Verdansk gets nuked, that Verdansk will disappear for a while. So I'm wondering if, when World War II Vanguard drops, what if we don't see a new map? But maybe the nuked version of Verdansk will return and we'll just have two different maps available. Because a World War II setting for a map, I don't know how that would make much sense in Warzone when we have modern weapons and stuff like that. It would completely change up the gameplay formula. It is going to be weird though if World War II weapons do transfer to Warzone because surely those weapons wouldn't be good and they would be able to get outperformed by any of the Cold War or Modern Warfare weapons. But at the end of the day, it is just a video game, so I feel like they'll probably make the past weapons still just as strong as the modern ones, even though it doesn't make any sense. There has also been a rumor from Tom Henderson or Long Sensation on Twitter that there's apparently going to be some sort of standalone zombies experience coming at some point. And I'm wondering if maybe there could be some sort of zombies edition added into Warzone that's free to play. So maybe instead of getting a new map, we could see some sort of zombies edition that is completely separate from Battle Royale. Again, that's just a theory. I'm just speculating here. A lot of people are saying that the World War II setting is boring and I completely disagree. Even if they're not doing an alternative reality game, there are tons of things in World War II that Call of Duty has never explored. There are so many atrocities that happened in the war and so many things that aren't really talked about as much and they could explore some of the more undercover things that went on during the war instead of it just being a generic Call of Duty campaign. They could try and tackle some of the things that the game hasn't tackled before. Whether Call of Duty would be willing to do that though, I'm not entirely sure. Call of Duty World War II was pretty historically inaccurate. I 
remember there was that one mission where, you know, you were supposed to be an entire army and you were just a handful of people running across this really open space and there were tons of people around you and tanks and stuff like that and yet you were somehow able to survive even though the actual war was against two different teams, not just a handful of people running across an open land whilst being shot at and somehow surviving. I do want to say if part of this game is going to be set in the 1950s then I think that they're not going to be limited in terms of the weapons. A lot of people have been saying well, you know, World War 2 has a limited amount of weaponry. Well, if they're delving into the 1950s as well, that's going to open up the door for even more weaponry. We also have no idea as to what the co-op mode is going to be in this game. Is it going to be zombies? If so, is it going to be connected to the Dark Aether storyline? Or is it going to be a completely new mode? Let me know in the comment section down below, do you think that they will do zombies or do you think they're going to do something else? And a huge piece of information is that according to VGC sources that have reported a bunch of stuff accurately on Call of Duty in the past, they did corroborate the fact that there is not currently a new map planned for Warzone with World War II Vanguard, but there may be some sort of World War II overhaul. But according to them, World War II Vanguard is going to be played on Modern Warfare's engine. Now personally, I don't really like the movement systems of Modern Warfare. I think that it's a bit clunky and slow. A lot of people prefer it though, with the slower slide and the slower movement, no unlimited sprints, the super sprints, and just overall it's a bit slower gameplay, but you have to bear in mind that the engine is just mainly the graphical aspects. Yes, somewhat the movement is tied to the engine, somewhat. That is why Warzone currently doesn't have the swimming mechanics like prior Treyarch games have, but they will be updating it soon with the new Euro Mountains map. I just hope that the movement systems in World War II Vanguard are a bit faster where you can slide a lot more fluidly because I think that Treyarch's gameplay is just a lot more fluid, but for some weird reason a lot of people prefer Modern Warfare's movement style. But Modern Warfare's engine has more graphical capabilities. Black Ops Cold War's engine is kind of like a mixture between the one from Black Ops 3 slash 4 combined with elements from Modern Warfare's engine. It's basically a mixture of the two, whereas according to this, COD 2021's engine is going to be Modern Warfare's, but it will be changed. You have to bear in mind that the engine doesn't affect the colours and stuff like that, but what it will affect is the graphics. How colourful and vibrant the game is, is going to be a design choice by Sledgehammer Games. Trek prefer brighter colours, Infinity Ward prefer brown and yellows, Infinity Ward prefer more realistic colours, but they're a bit more washed out, but overall Modern Warfare's engine is more graphically capable, so in the World War II setting, it's going to look absolutely beautiful. But like I said, I do hope that they make the game look a bit more vibrant because yes, the gritty atmosphere of World War II is cool, but it can get a bit depressing at times. And I think that the bright colours in Treyarch's games help to engage the audience instead of feeling down when they're in a realistic war setting. If that makes any sense, it's basically a psychology thing. Bright colours obviously make you feel happier. In terms of the movements, because I feel like it's going to be similar to Modern Warfare's, I hope they basically merge Black Ops Cold Wars and Modern Warfare's movement together where it's similar to Modern Warfare's but more fast paced and you can slide fluently because I love the slide and being able to just slide about. It makes the gameplay a lot more fluid. I know it's not realistic and some people don't like it but that's what I prefer and I want to see unlimited sprints as well but the engine itself doesn't affect that. I do also hope that there is swimming mechanics in the game. That's always fun. Trek swimming mechanics are by far the most fluid I think in any first person shooter ever. Also because they're using Modern Warfare's engine it means that the gun's mechanics are going to be very, very crisp. That's something that Modern Warfare does amazingly. The reload animations and the effects when you shoot, they're better than any other Call of Duty, so hopefully we see a repetition of that with Call of Duty 2021 and we can get phenomenal gunplay because regardless of what you think of Modern Warfare, the gunplay is better than any other COD. Anyways, that's everything I wanted to talk about today. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, Bye.